of the residents at Kendall Court. And Mark, I think you're going to introduce, please. Indeed. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so the report updates the board on the two parallel strands uh, of engagement we've been undertaking with our colleagues in Brighton. Uh, if I just take them in turn, the, the first one uh, relates to the Health and Wellbeing Board to Health and Wellbeing Board. Uh, following the last meeting, uh, you'll recall that you wrote again uh, to your counterpart in Brighton on the on the 5th of October. And this letter resulted in uh, a meeting being held between the two of you uh, on the 15th of November. The contents of that meeting are summarised in section two of the report. Uh, but I did just want to draw out the two key points uh, from that meeting. Uh, the first is that Brighton and Hove City Council maintains that they do not knowingly place people with care and support needs out of area. Uh, and if that statement is to be accepted, uh, it would suggest that their systems and processes for identification of need at the point someone uh, presents to them as homeless uh, uh, are fundamentally flawed. The, the second point is one of responsibility. Uh, and uh, at the meeting, Brighton and Hove City Council uh, held the view that as soon as someone accepts a place at Kendall Court, uh, the Care Act duties and responsibilities immediately fall to East Sussex. This is a view that the County Council strongly uh, disputes uh, and regardless of the Care Act, uh, hold the view that uh, Brighton and Hove has a, a moral and legal duty to support any individual that they place uh, out of their area. The, the second parallel strand of engagement is council to council. Uh, and the Exec Director for Adult Social Care and Health in East Sussex received a response to his letter, uh, his 15th of August letter on the 5th of October. The letter from Brighton did little to resolve the concerns and issues. Uh, and as such, a response was sent back to them on the 4th of November, clearly setting out what was required to resolve the issues uh, and a reply to that letter was actually only received last Friday. So after the publication of, of this uh, Health and Wellbeing Board's papers. Uh, so I'll just summarise the, the reply uh, from Brighton. It, it didn't attempt to address any of the issues, but really merely restated its position in respect of the Care Act. Uh, it did, however, indicate a reduction in out of area placements. The figure quoted was 168. Um, that's 64 in Eastbourne, quite a significant reduction uh, from previously reported. And that's following the decant uh, from a hotel that they'd commissioned following the uh, potential planning enforcement action. The figures in Lewis remain uh, at a, a, around 104. Also in the letter, uh, it anticipated that those numbers would remain around this level, uh, which suggests that there's uh, no strategic plan to address the temporary accommodation challenges faced within the city. And the letter concludes by stating that they're currently reviewing the Health Watch report that was published and presented to this board some two and a half months ago. Uh, finally, I have to inform the board that sadly another Kendall Court resident tragically took their own life on Friday, uh, bringing the total now to 10. Uh, and it's in this context that the County Council is taking further advice on the legal action available to prevent another Brighton and Hove City Council resident coming to serious harm or even death whilst temporarily accommodated in the county. I'll leave that there. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mark. Are there any comments or questions? I mean, Philip. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Probably stating the obvious, but I, f I found this whole thing, you know, the period of time that it is occupied, I, I find it all quite shocking. And again, from my perspective, 3.3, certainly we need to take further advice to explore legal action and you know I would support that wholeheartedly you know Brighton th th this is not the right level of engagement in my opinion and we have to do all that we need to do to get this message across to them as strongly as possible I'll leave it to that Jim thank you very much Councillor John Ungar before <laughs> Councillor John Barnes 
Thank you, Chair. I'm absolutely disgusted. Absolutely disgusted. This is just unbelievable when we think that councils have a duty to cooperate with each other and we see that basically there's a brick wall. That's how I interpret it. And um, a disregard of people. It is just unbelievable that a council could behave in this way. It is something I'm just, well, I'm really upset to hear that there's another life being lost. I would suggest the way forward is to quickly get uh, an alternative uh, barrister's view to get some, so that we know we've got both feet firmly on the ground and take court action. Um, I think that the other thing is, is what can we do on the safeguarding thing? Is there room for safeguarding board to get involved? Um, I think that might add the weight to, to, to our argument, but also look to protect the people who we you know, are so, so, so vulnerable. It isn't, I don't know, it, 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 it beggars belief. And at the end of the day, these are people who need support and the people who are meant to be supporting it appear to me to be just walking away and washing their hands from it. Can I just suggest also that we look at the building to see if there are any covenants that we could use about the use of the building. Um, you know, I have on my house a covenant that says I need to have a yellow door. Um, I don't know, you know, very obscure, but there might be something like that, the covenants on that building, and maybe we could get some legal advice on that. But I think get more advice and then take action. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll come back to that in a moment. John Barnes, and then I'll come to John Routledge. Um, I think Councillor Unger has made uh, one of the points that I wanted to make. Is there a role for the safeguarding board in all this? Because these are vulnerable adults. Um, there used to be a form of law where you could go for decoration to get an authoritative reading of what the law was. Presumably that now is subsumed in judicial review. But it does seem to me that we need to establish very clearly what the law is and then act. Um, I really am in despair about the response from Brighton and Hove, which seems to me uh, that of Pontius Pilate, I'm afraid. Um, and a Pontius Pilate who's refusing, in a sense, to even begin to think that these are Brighton people who have been uh, put across the border, but basically still have links in Brighton and Hove. It really is an outrageous piece of behaviour, I think, by that council. Um, but we do need to get the law straight and then act on it. Thank you. John Routledge, please. John. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, on the safeguarding issue, this is something that at Healthwatch we are looking into and we've got to that point now where we we do think it deserves serious consideration about whether a discretionary thematic review should take place on the safeguarding front this has gone on for such a long time now just wanted also to mention that we are pressing brighton and hope city council for a response to the recommendations that we made in our report that came to this board at the last meeting and um, we haven't had that response yet um, one small glimmer of hope is that some of the recommendations that we did make have been taken on board in terms of Brighton commissioning their new temporary and emergency accommodation going forwards. Um, and that might be one opportunity for Kendall Court because for Kendall Court, the lease hold arrangement with Brighton um, does expire next year. So there is an opportunity for um, the City Council to demand higher standards, um, which might help. And just to remind members of this board that we're not talking about every single person that is placed in East Sussex by Brighton. Um, the report that we produced earlier this year did show that, you know, roughly half of the people that are being placed, even in Kendall Court, which is probably one of the one of the worst places, were actually OK. They were quite happy to be there and had a plan for their next steps in terms of housing. 
So this is not just an issue about Brighton placing anybody in East Sussex. This is an issue about placing vulnerable people and people with complex needs in East Sussex. So just to remind people of, of that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, John. And just to reinforce, uh, reinforce the point you made, in the conversations that we had, they were very clear that that is something that they wouldn't do, that they consider every tenant that they put into Kendall Court to not need uh, need the support um, packages. And so, therefore, uh, they don't need to do any more than, than they are. I just find it, uh, and, I, and again, I have to be careful and, and use the words carefully, but having brought it to their attention so many months ago and having been really brutal uh, in my description of a a neighbouring council that we want to work with, taking the view that they can place people into East Sussex to die, um, seemed a bit hard at the time. But it's happened again, and I reiterated the last time we met that the last thing anyone would want to see, uh, and, and of course we don't know the circumstances of the last one, but, but the fact that there's so many happen now in one spot can't be coincidence, there must be something that links it. Um, and, we, you know, I, I just don't know, as the chair of this board, how we can stop it. I understand all the bits about taking more legal advice, because obviously, if the fundamental difference is that Brighton's interpretation of that act is different to ours and are content that the decisions they're taking are within the law, then we're all going to struggle. But I just go back to the leaders of, of the council and the politics around it all, and I'm not being political with a big P here now. If I was the leader of Brighton Council or the chair of their health and wellbeing board, I would be asking my officers, how can this happen again? How on earth have we allowed this to happen again? And um, I genuinely hope that, that this can be resolved um, and sooner rather than later. So um, what we're asked to do is note the additional information, uh, ongoing concerns and actions set out in the report in respect of Brighton and Hove residents temporarily accommodated in East Sussex and agree to receive a further update report on the situation at our next meeting in March. And I would hope sincerely that Brighton and Hove will have made some significant uh, responses and changes before that time. So uh, if we're happy.